All right, this is the tweaked version of the final, I guess, on device two. And I'm gonna show you a few more things and we're gonna wrap this, this device up and we'll move on to something else. All right, so I'm gonna come over to Substance Painter and this is, this is what we have. Um, all right, so let's do a little bit of work here. Let's first of all, get rid of some of the dirt on these buttons. So I'm going to come over to the buttons, and this is the dirt here. I'm going to right click on the mask and add a paint layer. And if we look at the properties here, we'll see I'm down here. I'm press X, I'm up there, X, I'm down there. And I'm just going to paint over like this, and I'm just painting over the top of these buttons to remove the dirt from there, but nowhere else because I want these buttons to look different than that. Okay, press X to come back up. All right, so this is dirt. And now my buttons look like that. Okay, so we're gonna make the buttons glow. I'm gonna add an emissive. So I'm on the button layer, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna be adjusting this emissive intensity. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll bring that up. But what I really need to do is come into my texture settings and come down and you'll notice that I don't have any missive channel. I've got color and height, etc. So I'm gonna click on the plus and I'm gonna add emissive. All right, now I'm going to add a fill layer and in the properties for that fill layer, I'm gonna turn on emissive and I'm going to change the color to something like red. You can already see something happening there. I'm going to add a black mask because I don't want it everywhere. I'm going to click on the polygon fill tool, come over here to the chunk, and I'm going to click right there. And I'll, that's the one that I want to be emissive. All right, so I'm going to have like a red color on this. So this is going to be red emissive. And I want that more intense. So I'm going to come back here. I've got the emissive intensity I can play with, but I also have. If I scroll down here, activate post effects, that's on the display settings. Activate post effects, and then glare. I'm gonna turn that on, watch the emissive. All right, I can open this up and I can choose from different shapes. I'm gonna just choose blue. And now I have that thing glowing. And you can decide how much you want. You can turn the emissive up and down. So I'll just leave it about there. So I got that one glowing. I'd like to have another one glowing over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to duplicate that layer. I'm gonna call this green emissive. I'm going to clear that mask. That one will stay on. And I'm gonna do another one. But first, I'll change the color to sort of a green color. I'll come back to my mask, click on the polygon fill tool should be there and I'm going to click there and now I have that one glowing all right now the next thing I'd like to do is on the base layer I'm actually going to find my glass and I'm going to bring it up to the top and have it just shiny like that all right now that's the base and this is the buttons Let's just add a little bit of dirt on these screws, which didn't seem to get much. So I'm going to come down to the dirt layer. And I'm going to, on the paint layer here, that we just used to clear the buttons over there, I am going to switch my brush to a dirt brush. I'll try just dirt one. just dab some on there like that you can use whatever brush you want or alpha just like that there we go and that's done the final thing to do is to add a little bit of text. So I'm going to come back to the base layer. 
and I'll come right up to the top and I'll do this as a paint layer and I'm just going to choose color and height and I'll make the color let's say we try black and we'll drop the height a little bit there's a few different ways that you can do text uh, in substance painter let's go to orthographic view if I come up to my alphas I can type in font and I can choose a pre-made one right there so I could choose say system and I could left click and hold the right mouse button and I could click there and that will add the font now it's a little bit blurry so the thing about adding text in substance painter is you need to have a lot of textile density a lot of UV space in order for it to look clear however we can also up res this and we'll do that in a moment so um, let's see maybe I would have maybe I'll use these fonts for the moment and I'll put system here maybe do I want it a little bit deeper for this one now this is obviously not in Russian maybe I'll have safety system there how's that or do I want this and I could do something like that or just to have that let's see how it looks if I up res this all right quite a bit sharper let's add another paint layer and let's make this off white and let's not use any height at all let's just do color and we'll come up here and we'll use a font um, maybe we'll try that one we'll click that and I'll do something like a one and uh, that may not be the best font for this but you know you can type in your own font now I'm at the 2k resolution and so let's try that and see what that's like for I could do a1 change that to a2 and then change that to to b1 and maybe b2 over there so I could have some font like that there and um, if we like that font uh, let's see well let's maybe stick with that and then I could write like four aft all right side I don't know that kind of thing now at that point what we can do is we can let's write text again we can choose the eraser and come to the brushes and maybe the dirt brush again it's maybe dirt one just reduce the flow and just dab at this a little bit just to do that and I could come over here and I can do the same thing on that one so that we get rid of some of that if of course you do your text uh, in fill I'll do one more maybe we'll do something down here I'll do fill black mask here I will do color and height let's say I'll drop the height and we'll come here and we'll do paint Let's see what it looks like in black. Yeah, maybe that. I'll maybe open. Maybe close. And maybe clear. Okay. 
I don't like the size of those, so let's do that again. And let's do it like this. Clear. Close. And open. All right, I'll come to the eraser and I'll use a brush, dirt brush again. Let's see, what's this one like? Just a little bit of, of yeah, that's too much. Maybe that one like that. Yeah, okay. The reason I, I I wanted to show you this is I can come back and I can say, no, you know what? I wanted that in white. So, you know, using a fill layer you can you can fix it up. All right, we've done our job though. Let's make sure we're in perspective view. Let's maximize. And actually, yeah, we're at 2K. So there is our device. And it's time now to export this and bring it into Blender and we'll fix these buttons a little bit as well. Now there's more stuff that I could do. You could spend more time. I changed the plate. I did uh, slightly better text on these things. And I, I took my time a little bit uh, more. But anyhow, let's say you were satisfied with that. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come up to File, Export Textures. Actually, just before we do that, check your, your labels here. All right, because these will be the names of the materials. And that's fine. Okay. So we're going to go to an Output Template. And I like to use the PBR Metallic Roughness Template. And the thing you got to look at here is the Normal. All right, and you'll see that it's set for DirectX, uh, which Blender uses OpenGL. Now you could easily export this and then flip the green channel, but I could just drag this OpenGL up to here and choose RGB, and now I've got that. So I'll come back to here. I make sure I choose that now, PBR Metallic Roughness. That's the one, and find a location. I'm just gonna do a test one here. Click Export. And you get Curse Device Video 2 buttons, base color, roughness, metallic, normal height, and emissive on the button layer. And there's also stuff on the base layer. Okay, so I've got those. All right, I'm going to save that. Although I won't end up keeping that, I'll end up using this one. We come back over here, and we're now in Blender. I'm going to come to the Shading tab. And you can see I've got part of this already set up here. Let's choose that one here, the base. I'm going to change the name here. No, I'll leave that on base. Select the principal PSTF, shift control T, and we need to find where that is. Okay, we want base color to roughness for the base. And it puts them on for us. And now we're going to do the buttons. Shift Control T, scroll down and search for it. There are the button space. That one has the emissive on it. We're going to need that. And we have this. Let's just have a quick look at it. Before we do that, let's grab these buttons here. Let's come in and select the tops. And Control Plus a few times till I get the whole thing. And I said I was just going to pull those in like that. Okay, so everything's looking okay, but we need to get that emissive working. Very easy to do. I'm going to control and spacebar. I don't need the displacement node here because I'm, I'm not going to use cycles, so I'm going to select that and delete it. That leaves the displacement map. Well, I'm going to use that actually for the emissive. So I'm going to press N and select it, label, and change this to say emissive. And that will be reflected over here as well. Now all I need to do is open this up, scroll down, and find that emissive. There it is. And I'm going to drag the color output into emission. And I'll change the emission strength to something like 8. Let's go back. Let's have a look. It's glowing a little, not too much. Let's go to layout. That's because I have to come over here. Now I would typically render in Eevee. So I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, that's where we get it, screen space reflections. Okay, 
and we have our finished piece and if you want you can come back here and say well I want this a little bit more so I'm going to change that to something like 12 and you've got your thing going now what I'll do is I will add maybe a light or two although I would I'm not really ready to render this or anything like that uh, I'm just going to move the light over here near this one here and I'll turn it up to like maybe 40 and I'll change the color to a sort of a reddish color here and I'll say use scene lights and I'll switch this maybe to this and I'm getting some light from that I think probably for here I would probably under shadow I'll turn on custom shadows or contact shadows and then I'm going to take this light and I'm going to copy it over here and I'm going to make it like a green color sort of to simulate that and then I would probably put more lights in the scene but we have our stuff working in blender okay with all of our indents etc and then of course you can just experiment with the, the built-in HDRI and see if you like it and by the way if you don't like that effect there where you see the reflection there just take the specular you can turn it down you can turn it right off Okay, sometimes I like a little bit of it, sometimes I don't, depending on what the situation is. So, we're done. We've finished uh, that piece of the panel, and we'll move on to um, another part. Hopefully that was uh, useful to you, helpful to you if you're using Substance Painter, and we'll see you next time.